Good evening and welcome to the 2022 High School Course of Study Night. My name is Dr. Kwame Morton and it is my pleasure to be with you tonight. I'm one of the district's assistant superintendents. Joining me is an esteemed panel of outstanding educators. I will introduce them uh, later on. Uh, today and tonight's uh, presentation will give us an opportunity to just review some of the pertinent information relative to your child's transition to high school. Uh, you also have an opportunity to, answer, to, to ask some questions tonight and have those questions answered as well. All right, we're going to go through a quick review of information. So the information on your screen tonight, there was uh, three Screencastify presentations that were sent out uh, by your middle school's principal on Monday. The, the information contained within these presentations uh, were specific and again were designed to ensure that uh, information pertinent to your child's success uh, was included and was shared with you as well. So something that's very important for us here in Cherry Hills, this idea of student voice. Um, we, we, we tend to work with our students in a way that's beyond just listening to what they what they have to say, but we we listen to them, we interact with them, and we include our students and in key decisions uh, that are made at the high school level. I have two videos of students from high school uh, west and high school east that'll just share a little bit about these uh, involvement opportunities. Hi everyone, my name is Aziza Benamdala, and I'm a senior here at West. For the past four years, I've had numerous opportunities to use my voice and express my opinions through participating in town halls with the superintendent, principal advisory councils, in-class discussions, and most frequently in extracurriculars. For example, last year I came together with a group of students to form the Diversity and Inclusion Council in order to ensure our community is inclusive of our diverse student body. Staff and administration were supportive of our mission, addressing our concerns and listening to our ideas. No matter what your passion is, you will find someone who is willing to listen and support you here at West. And no matter where you go to high school, make sure you speak up and use your student voice. Awesome. We also had uh, some, out, some students from Cherry Hill East as well uh, that went through a process where they began to uh, advocate for our district's start times at the high school level uh, to be reviewed, the students in particular. Uh, wanted to see the high school start times uh, be pushed back. These students uh, were able to attract media attention. Uh, they participated and presented at several board meetings. And we, we just um, sort of convened a process where we included the students with um, other personnel from across the district to work with them and identify recommendations for moving the start times back. Uh, one of those students who was instrumental, and that is a student over at High School East, uh, Gina Liu, this young lady, has a few words to share as well. Hi, I'm Gina Liu, and over the summer, hearing the concerns of the student body, Aaron Rodin and I created CHPS Students for Later Start Times. We organized and we pushed for change, changes that would prioritize students' health and safety. Since the beginning, both Aaron and I were committed to see this to the end. And I am particularly grateful that our voice touched the hearts of the board members. As you know, I, along with other community members, have a meeting to see how this can be implemented. I can say 100% that I love being a part of this process of hearing different perspectives and more importantly, seeing how different people can come together to build a better future. It's been an exhilarating, at times stressful, yeah, but outstanding um, past couple of months. I'm so excited to see how we can continue to grow Cherry Hill together for the future, for the better, for the students. Thank you. So the freshman reg registration process, can you, can you see the slide? The next slide, I just want to make sure. Is this on? All right, give me one sec. Let me reshare it. Give me one second. I apologize. How about that there? Perfect. All right. All right. So 
freshman registration information. So critical information uh, about the transition process is available on the school district's website. If you go on the school district's website, chclc.org, click on the academics tab. Uh, there, you'll be able to find the high school course selection booklet. As we go through this process, we are updating this high school course selection booklet, and we plan to have it available and ready for you in about a week, uh, about a week from today. So course requirements for graduation. So students need 120 credits uh, to graduate. Uh, here, here are the key areas that students will uh, need to complete. In English, there's a four-year uh, requirement. Students will take English each year that they're enrolled. Social studies, there's a three-year requirement with a sequence of world civilizations, US history one and US history two. Uh, and mathematics, students have three years as well to complete algebra one, geometry, and one additional mathematics course. Science, there's a three-year sequence. And in Cherry Hill, we have the sequence uh, that's exactly printed here, biology, chemistry, and physics. Physical education and health, each year that students are enrolled, students must take one semester, which is half year of health, and the other semester, half year of physical education. Students need to, to take at least one full year of world language, one full year of visual and performing art, arts coursework, and one full year of 21st century career and life skills coursework. In addition, students have to take one semester or half a year of financial literacy and one semester or half a year of African-American studies. So the typical freshman course load uh, your, your, your guidance counselors will help with this information, uh, but it's typically between 35 and 40 credits. Uh, core courses, again, as I just explained, uh, are featured around English, math, science, uh, history, and world language. And the additional courses that students take, as mentioned, previous mentioned, physical education and health uh, electives, students have an opportunity uh, for study hall as well. There are several course levels for students. Uh, students may take courses at the accelerated level, uh, the regular level, uh, honors level, or advanced pl placement level as well. Elective courses. So elective courses are typically semester semesterized courses or full year courses. Semesterized courses will be 2.5 credits, full year credits, full year courses rather will be five credits. Students have the opportunity to select two alternates for each elective that is chosen. We have worked to expand our uh, elective course portfolio, uh, but some, some courses are more popular than others. Uh, at times, our upperclassmen do receive deference for those, for those courses, uh, but we have a wide array of courses for students to take and to uh, be enrolled in uh, as electives. Something that's specific and unique to Cherry Hill High School West in particular is the uh, Air Force Junior ROTC program that's featured at West. Uh, the Air Force Junior ROTC program uh, and their corps do a fantastic job of helping to train our, our children with discipline, instilling character, giving them a sense of belonging, a sense of pride in the school. Um, over the years, this, this group has done a fantastic job. They've received the highest rating uh, possible in the annual evaluations. And uh, if your children can benefit from something like this, I would suggest a conversation with Dr. Tony Damon and the folks over at High School West. So the daily schedule, the daily schedule at high school can be somewhat confusing. Uh, I'm not going to spend a tremendous amount of time uh, going through the schedule here. Your guidance counselors can help you with that. Uh, but if you think about the schedule, you can look at it in terms of an AM block, which is all, all of these courses, uh, one, two, and three, prior to LB1 and LB2. LB1 and LB2 would be the lunch breaks. And then a PM block, which would be those that occur after uh, the lunch block. Um, there's eight, eight, core, eight periods that students are able to be scheduled for, and they occur on a rotational basis. So there's three blocks here, Students will take A, B, C, and D. And then we go back to the beginning, which is A, A, B, 
And we have three sp spaces here. So you move to the next day, C, D, and then you start the cycle again. Uh, unique to the high schools, high schools have uh, a six day schedule. On days one through five, the periods are 57 minutes. Uh, on days five and six, they're extended period days. They are 87 minute period um, each, each. And the rotation is, is similar, but there are just two periods that occur uh, in the AM, two periods that occur within the PM, as opposed to the three on days one through four. Again, for more information about the schedule, you can speak to uh, your child's guidance counselor. So English language arts, this here, there was a sequencing uh, presentation that, that was made available to everyone, but uh, this is our English language arts course sequencing. So we mentioned that each year that students are enrolled, they're able to, they must take and complete at least uh, one English course. As I mentioned, the courses are available at the accelerated regular honors level uh, for our ninth grade students, concept level if the students have an individualized uh, educational plan. Um, sophomore year looks relatively relatively the same. Uh, when students move to their junior year, they have an opportunity to take English at the AP level as well. Junior year and senior year, uh, those opportunities are presented. In addition to that, students, as we mentioned, the elective courses uh, on the right in the pink, you see the full array of elective courses that fall uh, within the, the English language arts program. Social studies, we mentioned the three year cycle for social studies, world civilizations in ninth grade, US history one. Um, in grade 10, students have an opportunity to take US history one at the AP level as, as well. Uh, and then U.S. History II, senior year students are provided with an opportunity to take an elective. Uh, new this year, actually just began this year, uh, students have a requirement uh, in Cherry Hill in order to meet their graduation requirements. They're required to take one semester of African, African American studies as well. And the elective courses are listed here as well for you in pink. Um, as students progress throughout their high school careers, they have an opportunity to explore this wide array of uh, very interesting courses. World language, there's a one year requirement for world language as previously mentioned, uh, but there are a number of different uh, world language courses that exist. They exist at the honors um, accelerated and AP level as, as students move into the higher level courses. Um, but these are the courses that are available. Something that's been gaining uh, increasing momentum as well. It's an opportunity for students to, to, grant, to gain a New Jersey steel of biliteracy. Uh, and they do that by demonstrating proficiency in world language and English. And the seal appears on student, trans on student transcripts. Uh, we've seen uh, dozens of students take advantage of this opportunity in recent years. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful thing. There's been a tremendous amount of work in science to help to expand the courses that are offered in science. But here's the sequence. We have biology at the honors accelerated or concepts level. Chemistry is the same. The students move up into the next year. There's physics at the, at the accelerated or concepts level or the AP level. Uh, from there, students are able to take a fourth year of science if they're so interested. And there, it, there are tremendous, tremendous options that exist here within science. And mathematics. So mathematics placement is based upon what students have taken in middle school. Uh, but again, be reminded students have a three-year requirement with mathematics. Minimally, they'll need to make sure they have algebra one completed at the high school level, uh, geometry completed, and then there'll be a third year of mathematics as well. And based upon where students were placed in middle school, that will determine what course 
they're able to take in that in that third year. Again, this conversations with uh, your child's guidance counselor uh, would be very beneficial uh, in deciding what math courses would be of greatest interest to your child. So we mentioned involvement. Uh, involvement is something that is critically important. We found that uh, the more students are involved at the high school level, uh, we've seen a direct correlation with academic performance. Students perform better when they're more involved in the school, uh, believe, it or, believe it or not. So I know our high school administrators and the staff at both high schools uh, really encourage students to get involved in clubs, activities, athletics, I think we have approximately 70% of our uh, students involved in an athletic team or, or sport. There are athletic teams at the varsity, junior varsity, and freshman levels as well. So open enrollment, Cherry Hill is unique uh, in that Cherry Hill affords uh, prospective students with the, for high school with the opportunity of choosing what high school uh, would be of greatest uh, benefit to them. Uh, we, we are fortunate we have two outstanding high schools, uh, High School East, tremendous legacy, academic achievement and great school spirit. Uh, Dr. Perry and his team are doing great work there. Uh, high School West, uh, tremendous legacy, tremendous achievement, great alumni, great school spirit. Uh, Dr. Damon and her team are doing a great job there as well. Uh, so, but open enrollment, please. Be sure that you indicate your home school, school that you would normally go to if you didn't choose uh, to go to um, the, the, uh, the other side of town. Uh, make sure your school choice is added on the registration form, provide your parental signature, and turn the form in February 18th to uh, your middle school guidance department. So open, open houses. So open houses are scheduled uh, at both high schools, Cherry Hill High School West will have their open house on January 19th at 7 p.m. Snow date is January 24th. Uh, high School East will have their open house on January 27th with a snow date of February 3rd. Uh, both Dr. Damon and Dr. Perry truly wanted the opportunity to be able to show off the great things that are happening at the schools in person. Uh, we will see what we're able to do at this point. Our contingency, we, we are looking more toward a virtual format for that night based upon uh, where we are right now with uh, COVID transmissions. Uh, but if things begin to change, uh, we'll, we'll see what we're able to do. Uh, something else of note as well, I've had a few people reach out about shadow days uh, at the high schools. Uh, shadow days will not be scheduled. Uh, at the present time, all shadow days are postponed until further notice. So the high school guidance counselors uh, annually visit the middle schools to go through a similar presentation with students uh, to provide information uh, for them and to enlighten them. Uh, this was initially planned to be in person. However, we pivoted and it will be virtual. Uh, there was something similar that we did last year and holding these sessions virtual. Um, by all accounts, they were, it was very successful and we look forward to successful visits to Carusi, Beck and Rosa again. Uh, Carusi's visit is scheduled for the 7th, which is tomorrow. Uh, Rosa is scheduled for Monday, the 10th and Beck for Friday, the 14th. Students who are interested in uh, vocational technical Education uh, may attend an open house uh, with Camden County Technical Schools. The open houses are scheduled in May. Uh, there's a campus in Gloucester Township and a campus in Pensalkin. Um, session times are here. I would suggest a conversation with your middle school guidance counselor if you are interested or if your child is interested in Camden County Technical School. All right, so in, in just a minute or so, we are going to move into our next phase of this meeting, uh, Q&A. You'll have an opportunity to, uh, to ask questions. You may enter questions in the chat, or you may uh, ask the question aloud to us. Uh, but joining us tonight, like, as I mentioned before, is an esteemed panel of district uh, representatives from our central office 
I'm Dr. Kwame Morton. We have uh, Scott, Mr. Scott Goldthorpe, Supervisor of CNI, Violetta Katsikis, Supervisor of CNI, Allison McCartney, Supervisor of CNI, uh, Caitlin Mallory, Director of Special Education, Bonnie Mingen, Supervisor of Pupil Services, and Mr. Mark Wins uh, Wisely, Supervisor of Special Education. From our high schools, Dr. Dennis Perry, Principal at High School East, Mr. George Zarafis, uh, Assistant Principal at High School East, Mrs. Carly Friedman, Guidance Counselor from East. From West, we have Dr. Tony Damon, she's the Principal at West, uh, Mr. Jim DeSico, Assistant Principal at High School West, and Mrs. Lisa Sapici, Guidance Counselor from High School West. From our Alternative High School, uh, Mr. Lauren Giordano is on the line. And from our middle schools, from Beck Middle School, Mr. Augie Ramos, as the interim principal over at Beck Middle School, Mr. Terrence Somerville, assistant principal at Beck, Mrs. Margaret, Margaret Marcarney, guidance counselor from Beck Middle School, uh, Carusi, Dr. Neil Birdie, principal, Dr. Julie Benavides, assistant principal, and Ms. Martha Brown, guidance counselor uh, from Rosa Middle School, Mr. George Guy, principal, Dr. Al Morales, assistant principal, and Mrs. Natalie Alonzo, Rosa Middle School Guidance Counselor. All right. All right, so Ms. Safici, if you want to uh, read off the questions that we so absolutely. Um, I think the first question um, might actually be for, for me or Carly Friedman. So I'll start um, with the first question. Um, a parent asked about how it's decided whether a student takes honors, accelerated, regular, or concepts courses, um, and what is the difference in those academic levels? Um, do you, is it okay if I answer that, Dr. Morton? Absolutely. Go for it. Okay, um, so the difference between the different academic levels for math and English, we have regular, accelerated, and honors level courses for math and English only. For things like foreign language, history, and science, it is accelerated and honors level. There is no regular level. Concepts level, which did come up, is a special education course that is decided during a student's annual review if they have an individualized education plan. So that won't really be a course that you would select. That is something you would discuss with your child's case manager. The difference between the levels has to do with pacing and the amount of independent work that the student is expected to do um, outside of school and on their own. So a honors level course will move very quickly um, and there will be a lot of independent work required. An accelerated course would be you know, a, a little bit less, pay, uh, move at a little bit of slower pace and less independent work and a regular level course um, would be paced accordingly and would have you know, less independent work as well. The best example I can give parents of this, um, I used to be an English teacher before your kids were born, um, but I was an English teacher a long time ago at West. You're your age. I know. Um, I was an English teacher at West and how I would explain this to parents would say, every ninth grade student will read Romeo and Juliet, no matter what level they're in. The difference between the regular, the accelerated, and the honors would be how fast we move through that play and how much the students are expected to be able to do on their own with the play um, without a, you know, a lot of uh, teacher support all the time. So nobody has really had great, uh, has really had a lot of experience with that book. Every level will read them, but if your child is really motivated and can handle you know, a high level of rigor, then honors would be the way to go. And then it kind of goes from there. Those recommendations will be coming from your child's middle school team, and you will be able to see those recommendations in Genesis. The high school will not be making recommendations for your child. We don't know your children yet. We're looking forward to meeting them, but the middle school teachers will make recommendations and you as the parents will be able to see those in Genesis and be able to discuss with your child's middle school counselor you know, what choices may be um, appropriate for them. So I think that's the difference in the levels and how it's decided. Um, your, your child's teachers will make recommendations. You will be able to view those in Genesis um, starting um, in February. And then you will have a discussion with your child and your child's counselor at the middle school about what levels are appropriate for them. 
awesome. Okay. The next question um, was about art electives. What art electives are available for freshmen? Um, Dr. Perry. Dr. Perry, do you, you want to answer that? I was going to, Dr. Perry, do you want me to answer? Um, sure. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we have, um, there's fine art, commercial art, 3D art. There is photography at East. Students can't take it till junior year. Um, this is Fiji, I think at West, they can take it earlier, right? Um, and then there are a few higher level art electives, but for freshmen, those are the courses um, that fall under art. That yes, freshmen um, Mrs. Reedman, you're right. Um, but when we meet with your um, children this week and next week, there will be a whole slide of available freshman electives that they can take. It will include art electives, um, 21st century life and career electives, computer electives. So there's, I think, two and a half slides um, in the presentation we will do for your uh, children this week and next week that have all of the electives that are available to freshmen. And it also denotes next to them whether they're available at East or West. So Mrs. Friedman is right at West, some students can take, ninth grade students can take photography, but at East, see that's not allowed. But fine art is at both um, schools and 3D art is at both schools. Excellent, thank you. Um, the next question is for the middle school counselors. It's about when they can set up a time to meet with the counselor to discuss their child's course selection. Hi, this is Martha Brown from Crusade. First, I apologize for my camera. It is not functioning properly. Um, I've had everyone in the house try to fix it for me. So I apologize for not being on camera. Um, at Crusade Middle School, uh, we actually will be going into uh, the classrooms. The uh, presentation from the high school counselors will happen. And then the Crusade counselors uh, will follow that up with visits to the homerooms as well. And uh, we will uh, reiterate the information that the high school counselors present and uh, kind of go over um, a little bit in uh, more detail as far as how to uh, select the courses uh, in Genesis and how that process works. So those dates are still uh, being determined um, as, as we kind of formalize you know, our plans moving forward but that will happen throughout the month of January. Awesome, thank you. Uh, uh, this is, go ahead. Go. This is Marnie Malcarney from BEC. Um, and just to reiterate what Martha said, it's the same at BEC. Um, we will go into the, typically go into the science cores and we'll meet with your students to answer any questions and to discuss how to fill out and how to make the selections. And then as parents, if you have any questions, just give us a call. We could um, set up a phone call or a Google Meet or whatever would be most convenient to answer your questions. Same for Carusi, as far as any parent questions. Hi, this is Natalie Alonso from Rosa. Uh, I can say that we do things pretty similarly at Rosa. I go in usually through the history classes, the history AC, and go over the presentation again with students, take questions. Uh, students are able to make appointments with me directly. And just as the other counselors said, if you want to be involved in that, you know, via Google Meet or uh, a phone conversation, I'm happy to do that. These will also take place in the month of probably January, early February. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, there, were, there, were, there will also be um, a video going out on how to access the recommendations for your child and how to schedule, you know, courses, um, how to select courses um, for your student. So there's also a tutorial, which is my voice, um, of how to go about um, selecting those courses, but you can always contact the middle school counselors for more direct advice about choosing levels or electives or things like that. Um, and if there's anything that they can't answer, they'll call one of us at the high school. So you'll be definitely well supported through this process. Um, the next question is a super easy one. When are course selections due? The eighth grade course selections are due February 28th of 2022. Um, you will be able to see the recommendations and start to make selections for your child on February 7th. So the window for eighth grade um, course selection will be from February 7th, 2022 to February 28th, 2022. 
and those recommendations and selections will be in the Genesis parent portal. It's important to note that it's the parent portal. Your child, it, they don't have access to it. It has to be through the parent portal. If you can't access the parent portal, um, I suggest you call the guidance secretary at the middle school you'll your child goes to, and they should be able to set you up with a password or assistance in being able to utilize that Genesis parent portal in order to go through this process um, with your child. Um, there's a question about um, history classes, Dr. Morton. I don't know if we have a, a history supervisor here. Um, do, question. do ninth grade students take um, World Civ and how does that impact the requirement of <clears throat> African American history since it's only a semester? So um, some questions about how that African American history requirement looks in a schedule and if they are still required to take World Civ as a freshman as well. Uh, Dr. Perry, you want to answer that one? Yes, I, I, I would be happy to. Thank you for the question. So uh, World Civilization is a full year course that students take in, in ninth grade. Uh, in 10th grade, then they will take the um, uh, history, the US history course, which is a full, the first part of it, which is a full year course. The African American Studies course is a semester course. So in a freshman year, a student would take a full year of <clears throat> Civ, and then they would take a semester of the African American Studies, and then they would have another semester course, in a, uh, typically an elective, uh, maybe an art elective or, um, you know, an elective in, in another department that would offset the other half of the year that that is occurring. Thank you. Okay, the next question is also a content specific question regarding math. A parent has asked if a student can take more than one math class. Uh, one of the high school guidance counselors. Carly, you wanna answer that one? Uh, yes, students can double up in certain math courses. Um, <clears throat> we sometimes have students doubling up in algebra and geometry. Um, I would definitely recommend having a conversation with your current math teacher and current guidance counselor, if that's something you're considering to kind of go over the reasons, why do you want to double up and like, where do you want that to lead you down the line in the math sequence? So. Yes, definitely possible, but I would just say after a conversation uh, with all the parties involved, just to make sure you have the accurate, accurate information on what would be appropriate courses to take next year and where it'll lead, lead you down the line and or your student down the line in high school. Since a, a parent brought up you know, math, I just wanted um, the parents to, to be aware. Another parent asked, and I answered it separately, but I wanna pose it to the group um, about who makes the final determination about the level for their child? Is it the teacher or is it the parent? And the answer to that question is the parent and the student can ultimately decide what level um, classes their child takes with really the exception of math. And this goes along with the question that Mrs. Friedman just answered. Algebra is a high school requirement. So if your child has not had algebra in middle school, they must take algebra in high school. You, you cannot select to take geometry or a higher level class if you've not completed that algebra requirement. Um, so ultimately you do get to choose the level, but math is a little more difficult to choose a level that you are not recommended for um, because there's certain requirements that need to appear on a high school transcript. So I would be very cautious as a parent when you're um, going against the recommendation for math and to really ask more questions of your child's math teacher and of the middle school counselor before you make that um, selection to, to move up levels in math, because it could, as Ms. Friedman said, you know, have consequences later. Um, and that's something you, you want to be careful of. The other subjects, foreign language, English, science, if the recommendation is for a lower, lower level and your child would like to take a higher level, you know, that's up to um, the parents and the student, you know, to discuss if they are ready for the challenge. But math is more difficult because of certain requirements and content. Okay, um, next question um, was about um, honors classes which honors classes have their own section and which are mixed with other levels. Um, the only class I can think of, and I'm gonna ask Mrs. Friedman to help me, is foreign language um, for freshmen. Foreign language classes for freshmen sometimes are mixed with the accelerated level. There may be 10 honors students and 10 accelerated students in the same world language class. Um, in some of our higher science classes, things like anatomy, but that's not until your child's like a junior or a senior, there may be mixed levels. But for freshmen, I, I think the only 
time there's mixed levels is really for world language. Mrs. Friedman, what is, is that? Can, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. I think those are all the questions that I had there. Um, there was a, there was another question I just saw in the chat about uh, math. Yeah. About math. Yes. Um, so the other question about math is about, um, you know, if you're in a certain math class, you have to stick with that track. Um, can you can you switch math tracks if you find that is not for them? Um, I, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by track if you mean level. Um, so that, that's that's what that's what I think they believe. I was going to throw that one over to, to Mr. Goldthorpe. Okay, sure. So the the question was, my child is currently in geometry. I heard a rumor that they must stick with the, that math track. Or there be there may be no class for them to take if they decide to switch tracks. If my child finds that this track is not for them, can they switch tracks? Uh, so they can. So if a, a student's currently in geometry in eighth grade, the idea is that uh, when they they signed up for that pathway at the end of sixth grade to uh, take the the courses all the way through multivariable calculus. Um, so if you uh, switch from geometry to the A-level course, you would really you'd go from geometry to algebra 2A, pre-calc A, calc A as a junior. And then you could either go to AP stats or you could go to uh, AP calculus as a senior. So th there are options available for you, uh, but ideally you, you would stick in that uh, accelerated track if you're in geometry in eighth grade. Thank you. Hey, there's another follow-up question to that math class. Um, if my child, starts in one math class and you know does well, can they move up in a semester? It, it really depends on the class. Algebra one is a requirement. Um, you can't say, I don't wanna take algebra anymore. I'd like to go to geometry. So it really depends um, on how, on what they're thinking you know, of taking. We always absolutely 100% encourage students to challenge themselves, but we also don't want them to miss content um, because that can have ramifications later on in their academic careers. So I would say, unfortunately, this is kind of not a specific answer. That would be a case by case basis that you'd want to discuss with your child's counselor and the math supervisor at the high school if that was a situation you found your child in. Um, the next question was about foreign language. If they're currently doing a certain language in middle school, can they choose a different language for high school? Um, is there any world language? Mr. Zagrafos, you look like you're shaking your head. You want to jump in on that one? Yes, so if you are taking Spanish and you want to go into French, absolutely, you, you can definitely start a new language and that's where you would start in level one. Okay, if you are taking, uh, again, a language, whether it's Spanish or French in the middle school and want to continue that at the high school level, that's where you would start at level two. Excellent. Hey, there was a question about um, culinary arts. Culinary arts is open to freshmen at West. It is not open to freshmen at East, I don't think. Mrs. Friedman, it is not, right? Culinary arts. Is that open? Um, it is, yes. Okay. So culinary arts, your um, incoming ninth grader could select that. When you are selecting electives, we do ask and encourage you to choose, choose three alternate electives. Um, so that your child does get something that they're interested in. Um, electives do fill up. So we encourage students to select three alternate electives besides you know, the two that they'll choose um, as their first choice. But you could choose culinary arts um, as a ninth grader, um, but make sure you have backup electives you know, for that. Um, another question was about uh, a CAD class. Um, we don't have specifically anything called you know, CAD, um, but there are some great technology options. Dr. Morton, did you want to talk about some of the new technology options that we have? Yeah, I mean, so, so th there are uh, uh, sustainable design courses uh, that are available. There's uh, computer programming courses and uh, things along those lines as well. Um, uh, there is a tremendous conversation that's taken place about adding to the, to the course portfolio as well to uh, create some uh, career technical career and technical education uh, programming within this, this spectra of uh, computer um, drafting and things along those lines. So uh, there, there are opportunities that exist. Uh, I will be sharing 
some new course proposals next Tuesday. So I don't want to re reveal too much information just yet, uh, but, uh, but there are opportunities that are available. So just stay tuned. Great. Um, another parent asked about a possible physical education exemption. Um, if your child completes a certain amount of physical activity outside of school, could they have um, a PE exemption? Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, I really wouldn't go into a lot of detail on that at, on this forum because PE for all of your children does not start until the end of January, 2023. Um, so that is something that I recommend you discuss with your child's individual high school counselor when they actually get to high school. Um, so it's a little bit more relevant and timely. There is some paperwork that needs to be filled out, but there is the possibility for a PE exemption. Um, and that's just something that I would recommend you speak to the counselor about when you get to high school, because at this point, Point, you know, we, we wouldn't be granting um, an exemption for something that's a full year um, away um, at this at this junction. Um, another parent asked about access to curriculum ahead of time. I know we have a course selection guide that describes all the classes, but I know it's not a full curriculum, so I'm not sure of the answer to that question. I did drop okay. the link in the chat to our curriculum. Yeah, so on Rubicon Atlas is available on the website, and uh, Ms. Mallory put a link to it right there. Okay, um, and then another parent asked about where they find the open enrollment forms. Where is where's the open enrollment form? Uh, how is that distributed at the middle school middle school level? Um, we have hard copy, you know, just sheets um, for open enrollment that we have used in the past. If that's still going to be the the way that open enrollment works, then. Uh, each middle school, I believe, has those hard copy sheets that students can come get. And um, actually, when we go into the classrooms, we usually take a stack with us. And if everybody, anybody is thinking of going to a different uh, high school other than their home uh, high school, then we typically even give them out right there during our presentation. And the students bring them back to guidance to be sent over to our central office. I believe it was also done through the Genesis Parent Portal last year. I'm not sure if that will be available again. I'll have to, I'll have to check into that. We can do that again um, this year like we did last year. Natalie's correct. We did do it through the Parent Portal. Awesome. Thank we'll you. also do hard copies in the classroom as well. So a question about those open enrollment forms is when does it start? I believe it would start whenever they're um, available online. They'd be available available probably February 7th, but they are due February 28th. So in, in that window of time, is that correct? That those open enrollment forms would be due? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, there's some other you know world language questions that I'm going to group together. Um, one question says that um, the world language uh, is only required for one year, but do colleges typically look for a certain number of years? Um, that, that answer is yes. Most four-year colleges are looking for two years of the same language in high school. Um, so two of the same in high school. So if you start with French in high school, you should take two years of high school French um, in order for to meet you know, what colleges um, are looking for. Only one year is required for graduation, but colleges are looking for two years of the same language. Um, and that's something that the high school counselors definitely stress to the students when they make their course selections um, you know, every year. Another question about world language was if a student takes a world language outside of school, can that be added to their transcript? And that may be a question either for uh, Mrs. Minjin or uh, Dr. Morton. Sorry, just say that question one more time. I was they, reading one of the- if a, That's okay. If a student takes a, a world language outside of school, um, can that be added to their transcript? If this, so if the world language course is taken through uh, a provider that's accepted, um, we, we, there are a number of different providers that provide um, uh, opportunities for students to do like online or correspondence type courses. Um, and the great report, is, the great report transcript is presented to the school uh, typically, they are accepted. Yes. Okay. Um, some other um, questions were about study hall and electives. Um, one question was about music. Is music and band considered an elective? Yes. 
your students um, need to take one year of a visual and performing art elective and band would count as one of those. They also need to take one year of a college and career readiness elective. Um, th that's all in the course selection guide, which electives qualify for those, but band would definitely be an elective. Um, another question was about um, study hall. Do you need an alternate if you choose a study hall? We just encourage you to pick alternates no matter what. Um, so there's flexibility you know, in scheduling. But generally um, at East and West, if you choose a study hall, you probably will receive a study hall um, in your schedule. Um, Mrs. Freeman, that's correct, right? If you choose a study hall, you will get that. But we really want to encourage you to use um, alternates um, as well with that. Um, there's a question about the curriculum that's being taught in the health classes and the African American classes. Hey, Lisa, can I just jump in really quick? Really sure. quick? There was a question when I was reading a bit ago. Do you recommend that freshmen take study hall? I don't know if one of the uh, high school principals want to jump in on that. Would, would you recommend a freshman take study hall? Um, it depends, I would say. I mean, I, oftentimes, you know, high school, the, the, uh, the academic rigor and the, the pace of the courses and coupled with the number of activities that you have after school would be, you know, what's determining of that. Um, many of our students do have, do have study halls, and I think they find it to be beneficial. Uh, but I, I do feel as that's probably an, an individual decision based on the amount of time that you're able to devote after hours to school, or if you're involved in many other activities. Excellent, thank you. I'm sorry, Lisa. You, you can read the next question. Oh, okay. So the next question was about the curriculum in health and African-American studies. Is that encompassed in the Rubicon link that um, Ms. Mallory posted? Um, yeah, that, that would be, I think what, what she posted was a link directly to the uh, the page where you can access that information. Absolutely. Okay, so the curriculum would be would be posted in there if parents wanted to read up about it. Yeah, you would just click on the appropriate um, subject or course rather. Okay, there was um, a question about study skills and yeah. workshops for freshmen. Um, study skills, you know, is a class that is available through. Um, IEP and, and 504 processes. Um, there's classes like called writing workshop and vocal workshop. Those are open to freshmen. Um, I'm not sure if that answers the question. If it doesn't, you can add more detail in the chat. Uh, but those are classes that we do have our students take. Um, and that those may be some things that your child selects. Um, but most of the um, study skills would be through um, a team decision, through an IEP team or a 504 team would decide study skills. But things like vocal workshop or um, writing workshop, that's all things that you can, you can choose um, from there. Okay. Um, is there a concept level for world language? Um, at West, there is. I'm not sure about East. Mr. DeGrafis, I don't, do you have a? Yeah, I, I am not aware of one. We, we do not have a concept level for um, foreign language. Dr. Perry, am I, am I correct there? You are correct. Thank you. Correct, and just to jump in there, Lisa, it's not necessarily a concepts class. It is a uh, modified more language requirement that is available for our students, uh, typically in our self-contained programs. Right. Um, when will the um, course selection guide be available, Dr. Morton? Uh, course selection guide will be available. I believe the date is the uh, 18th that we have scheduled. It'll, it will be presented. Um, I'm going, to, I'm going to do an overview on Tuesday. Um, it will probably be ready by the end of that week. And we'll have it posted by the next Monday, which should be the 18th. I'm correct. So, so, so that'll be posted like around the 18th? It's kind of, yeah, I'm going to look at the calendar. OK, another um, parent asked, do you have to do open enrollment every year? Um, you do not have to do open enrollment every year. It's just a, a one-time process when a student is entering high school for the first time. So what, a question. So from eighth to ninth grade, or if a student moves into the district, uh, they have the opportunity to choose what high school they, they would like to attend. 
the parent was specifically asking, do you have to do it every year, like from ninth to 10th? And that answer is no. 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 But I would like to just add that it is a four year commitment. So, you know, decide, you know, uh, don't make that decision lightly. Consider all your factors because once you make the commitment to go to East um, or West, it is a four year commitment. Yeah, and I guess along those lines, you know, there is a little confusion about um, whether the district has a transfer policy or not. The district does not have a transfer policy. As Ms. Minchin said, the open enrollment uh, policy allows for, for students to choose what high school they want to go to. Um, once that choice is made, the expectation is that you will remain in that high school. Uh, if one is seeking to leave the high school, essentially what you have to ask for is for the Board of Education to waive the open enrollment uh, policy and allow a child to move to the other school. It's a, it's a lengthy process. Um, and it's not something that, that can be done, you know, very quickly. Uh, so I agree, Ms. Minjin, I, I think, you know, you should not take that decision lightly. So there's a question about sports teams and about students that um, get cut from sports teams. Is that common? Uh, is it common for students to get cut? from teams it depends what level the student the students are at uh if we're if we're talking about a varsity level team you know you look at varsity team is uh, um competing and, and, and attempting to win uh, i think you know some of the lower levels are more developmental and they, they tend to keep more um participants at the freshman level and even at the jv level as well uh, i wouldn't say that there were a tremendous amount of cuts but every year there definitely are cuts I think the beautiful thing is that we offer a wide uh, array of athletics, clubs, activities, and different op opportunities for students to get involved. So even if a child does not make the uh, wrestling team, there may be an opportunity to, to participate on another team. Uh, cross country may be fantastic. Uh, volleyball or something, uh, something else along those lines as well. There's a question about public speaking. Is a public speaking course mandatory for graduation? The answer to that is no, you do not need to take public speaking in order to graduate. However, on behalf of Mrs. Friedman and all of the counselors at East and West, I will advertise for the course um, because uh, it is a requirement at certain colleges. And in high school, both East and West offer that as a dual credit option where your child can earn their college credits for public speaking while they are still in high school. Um, it's a half a year course. They can take it in high school with kids that they know um, and they can do it as a dual credit class, get college credit for that and transfer that to whatever college or university they go to in the future. It is not mandatory to graduate from Cherry Hill East or West, but it is a great class to take and you will be able to have the added incentive of transferring that to college when you leave Cherry Hill schools. So not required, but definitely recommended. Um, there's another question about study hall and, and will my child get a study hall if I request it? Um, and the answer is yes, Mrs. Friedman is nodding as well. If you request a study hall at the beginning of the year, you will receive a study hall uh, in your schedule. Um, we have study halls every period. They accommodate the students. So if you do request a study hall, you should get a study hall. There's also a question about changing levels. If you start out at an honors level, can you change to an accelerated level and what the process is for that. Um, Mrs. Friedman, did you wanna talk about um, how to change levels when you're in the classes already? Sure. Um, so, you know, every student comes in and you're in the levels that you chose at soon, kind of in the middle of eighth grade. Um, so we of course hope that after talking to parents, teachers, guidance counselors, you, you're in an appropriate where you feel level where you feel comfortable. But um, if you do feel, if your student feels like they're in an honors level or a higher level course um, or an A-level and it's just too difficult, um, we do suggest that the students stay in the course, um, usually until interim, which is halfway through the first marking period. Um, we like to give them a chance to kind of get accustomed to the course, give it a little bit of a chance instead of just going in after a day and saying, this is going to be too difficult. I got to get out of here. Um, but at, if at that point they are really struggling, um, then after a conversation with uh, the teacher, school counselor, um, parents, student, all collaborating, um, there is a process where you can request to drop down a level. 
Um, the only thing I will say is that sometimes just say you're going from an honors level to an accelerated course, and if it's in English, there might not be an accelerated level English course the same period as your honors course, so it can shake up the student's schedule a little bit if you do drop down a level. Um, but yes, it is a possibility um, after first interim, which is about uh, like in October, and um, but there is a deadline to drop also by thank around Thanksgiving. Um, so yes, there's a time period you can drop a level, your student can drop a level if they need to. Excellent. And we have about four minutes left. There were there were a couple of uh, other there were many other questions that are here also. But what I wanted to mention is that uh, we, we are going to close this at eight o'clock um, sharp. And what we'll do is we will compile all the questions that were asked tonight and we're, we will post those questions on uh, the district's website uh, and make them available for uh, for for review. Uh, there was a question about do you expect most students will take African American studies? in ninth grade, is there a benefit in waiting until 10th grade when students take US history? I think the expectation is that they will take it in ninth grade. Um, we, we want students to, to have that course at the outset of their uh, time with us and, and Cherry Hill. Those who do not have an opportunity to take it then uh, would naturally take it uh, in 10th grade. Uh, but, but the expectation is that they will take it in ninth grade. Um, there was a question, Mr. Goldthorpe, I think you alluded to this a little bit later, but the question was from Trudy, will my child be at a disadvantage as he is now in regular math in eighth grade, he won't reach all the levels by 12th grade on this track. I don't know if you just want to say something really quickly about that. Uh, sure, no, they're, they're certainly not going to be at a disadvantage. So uh, taking the eighth grade math in eighth grade is, is the, the normal uh, progression. Uh, the, the pathway that, that follows from that is enriched algebra A typically in ninth grade, followed by geometry A in 10th grade, um, algebra 2A in 11th grade, and then pre-calculus A as a senior. Excellent. Thank you. There was a question. How does my child get more info about the instrumental uh, music program? Uh, I don't know if uh, someone wants to jump in on that one. How is that information shared at uh, the middle school level? instrumental music and music opportunities. I know at Rosa, our instrumental music teacher, uh, Mrs. Mark has always been instrumental uh, in getting that information out to her students. She definitely takes care of them and makes sure that they have all the information that they need. Yes, I would say the same at Carusi from our music staff. And awesome. Dr. Morton, just to let you know that our instrumental music um, folks have been coming from High School East and High School West uh, since uh, October. So our vocal and our instrumental music groups have come over. Uh, they came over with Dr. Damon from High School West. And we've had Mr. Kelleher and uh, Mrs. Lawsey uh, has scheduled with us, but because of the pandemic, she has not been able to come. So all they need to do is check in with their choral music teachers or their instrumental music teachers, as our guidance counselors have stated. Awesome, thank you, sir. Um, great question here. Are courses at High School East and High School West the same? Uh, yes, the courses are the same at High School East and High School West. Uh, there are is a, the, only three exceptions. Um, high School East, German is taught in the world languages at High School East, while Italian is taught at High School West. Uh, additionally, High School West houses the Air Force Junior ROTC program. Um, high School West, has um, a functional vocational program as well. Uh, but other than that, I think everything else is, is exactly the same. So the, the levels, courses, everything is, is the same across the district. Uh, Dr. Morton, it is eight o'clock. It is eight o'clock, okay, all right, <laughs> all right. Well, we're, we're gonna stop here at eight o'clock. As I said, uh, we are going to uh, take questions, the questions that were listed here on the question and answer, as well as those that were compiled in the uh, in the chat. And we will uh, put out answers to these questions and, and post that information on the district's website. I definitely want to thank you all for taking the opportunity to uh, spend some time with us this evening. Thank you to our esteemed panelists uh, for your support and this tonight. Everyone have a great night. Uh, be safe. I think we're expecting snow tomorrow. Stay tuned and listen out for our district announcements 
and uh, we'll take it from there. Have a good evening.